Good morning. First, I'd like to take a moment to thank Governor Doug Burgum, the National Guard, Cass County Sheriff's Office, West Fargo Police Department, North Dakota Highway Patrol, and many of the other law enforcement partners for their support during this trying time. We are extremely honored in the metro area that almost 250,000 people from diverse backgrounds, experiences, and op uh, opinions. But we also are honored to employ brave men and women of the Fargo Police Department who work tirelessly to protect and serve our community. There are things that we know. We know we are shocked and we know that you're angry. We know that you're frustrated and we know that you're scared. But here's what I need you to know. Last night's actions do not define our community and its people. What defines this community, with thousands of members of the public volunteering to assist the city staff members and business proven district employees in cleaning up the impacted downtown area. They began organizing last night during the riot. When I came to work this morning, I had hundreds of people in the downtown area cleaning it up, getting out brooms, sweeping up the glass, boarding up the windows, Seven o'clock in the morning, people want to put our city back together. I also know our people will rise up to this occasion, not divided, but together. During much of yesterday, we saw our police and city leaders engaging in conversations with people protesting the tragic death of George Floyd. We respect and protect the right to peacefully protest. Black lives matter, period, no question. But we do not support anarchy. We do not support vandalism. That is not us and that is not Fargo. I'm extremely disappointed that a peaceful protest turned into a violent confrontation in the heart of our metro. Let us be clear. We witnessed the true spirit of Fargo and its people in the morning of Saturday, May 30th. Thousands of people organized a peaceful and powerful and unified display standing up for what they believe. A beauty of the day of unification and empowerment was stained when it evolved into last night's conflict and violence. Mayor and Judd and I were down at the city police department. We had good dialogue, we had good conversations, and that deteriorated to last night's violence. I believe the evening events which occurred in downtown Fargo, actions are a result of the outside influencers who are not reflective of our people. We need to pick ourselves up, and we're doing that. Glass panels can be replaced, and buildings can be repaired. The heart and soul of our community, however, that's what we need to focus on now. We can learn from last night's heinous events to become more unified, to become more understanding of everybody, and to disavow racism in all forms. Then we will be stronger together. Let not the actions of anger be the aspect that echoes in our community today. It is time not to think of retaliation, but to think of repair, both of property and more importantly, the relationships of the community, the members of all races. There is no question we need to follow the rule of the law for the protection of our people and our property. However, we also need to hear each other. We need to be more tolerant. We need to care about each other. Divided, we can accomplish little. Together, today is a new day in which we choose to move forward, Fargo strong together. Governor Bergen sat by my side last night as we went through incident command and worked on this hideous event that happened last night, which I'm not very happy about. But I'm so proud of the community members in our community that come together today to make this rebuild, come together, refocus, and move our city forward. So thank you. Governor Burgum. Thank you, Mayor, and good morning. It's always a, a great place to start is gratitude and standing here with these uh, incredible uh, leaders from law enforcement, the mayors of Fargo, Moorhead, or West Fargo, Cass County Commissioner, Chair Chad. This community, uh, has got incredible strengths, and that was on display yesterday morning. Uh, in North Dakota, we respect everyone's uh, right as Americans to free speech, and we protect that right. We also respect the right for the freedom to assemble. One of the things that really 
uh, separates us from many countries in the world. And we, we honor that uh, and the people that are in law enforcement actually are sworn to protect and serve every single person in our state and those rights that they have as Americans. But the important message that was began yesterday morning about justice and about humanity and about important aspirations for us to come together uh, as people and empathy and understanding, uh, it's lost when it moves from, from a peaceful protest to uh, what I think could only be characterized as an organized riot. Uh, at two this morning, I had an opportunity in the aftermath to uh, walk through and drive through downtown Fargo and visit with police officers and law enforcement officers and National Guardsmen and Highway Patrolmen and Sheriff's Office deputies that had been on the front lines and from their experiences, it's it's clear that the uh, that there's people that were that arrived last night, uh, not for dialogue, uh, not for progress, but really for for violence and vandalism. And our hearts go out to anyone who thinks that they need to uh, injure innocent people or destroy uh, property in an order to create space for a dialogue. Uh, because as we saw from the two mayors yesterday walking into the crowd, we saw Police Chief Todd and other members of the Fargo Police Department openly engaging with those that, that wanted to be heard. I would just say to anyone who's engaged in the protest, if you want to have a dialogue in North Dakota, all you have to do is ask. Uh, we stand ready to meet with anyone, to hear their concerns, uh, to listen, uh, to be present, uh, to feel whatever hurt they may have regardless of how many generations they may feel they've been wronged. Because North Dakota is a place where we've got the space and the time and the capability to listen and have those conversations. Uh, but we also have a duty as we serve to protect people and property. And when, when, it, the, when it turns into violence and vandalism, uh, that's when we're also grateful that we've got such capable and professional uh, individuals that work in law enforcement. As we've seen this last week, that those that serve us in law enforcement, <clears throat> with the uh, injury to the Grand Forks deputy and the, the death of Cody Holty, Grand Forks city police officer, which we'll be honoring on Tuesday, we know that, that the, it takes sacrifice and sometimes the ultimate sacrifice to protect those freedoms which we all take for granted. And so we also are grateful, <clears throat> as we've seen many times in North Dakota's history, that the law enforcement in our state uh, has an ability to be, to exercise restraint and professionalism. Last night, uh, what you saw on display here by law enforcement in North Dakota was one to protect people and property. Uh, it was not a, it was it was not what we've seen in other cities in in, uh, in America in terms of response to this. And I think again, it just shows uh, the the. <clears throat> The, the broad minds and the open hearts of the people of North Dakota in our approach. And as North Dakotans, uh, you should know when people say, well, well, we had National Guard, we had Highway Patrol, we had people from the Department of Corrections, we had Sheriff's Office, we had Sheriff's deputies coming from all over the state because that's what we do, we come together as neighbors. But it's also necessary because in North Dakota, uh, we have relatively few people in law enforcement relative to virtually every other state. And one of the reasons why we have relatively few law enforcement is because uh, North Dakotans respect the law, they're law abiding, they care about each other, they look out for each other. And that's one of the reasons why this is a great place to live and grow and raise a family. And that remains the same uh, for this community. And in the middle of this pandemic, uh, yesterday when we broke 3000 tests for the first time, 1.1 positivity rate, uh, I was, you know, arrived here in Fargo, uh, saw people <clears throat> out in, you know, restaurants and shopping and outside with their family. We had the peaceful protest yesterday and you have to say that we were in a great spot, uh, both, you know, locally, statewide and relative to almost any other place in the world. And so last night there's a certain sadness that comes uh, when we have uh, individuals that feel that they've got to turn their message into one of violence and vandalism. But again, I've got the deepest gratitude and the deepest respect for those, those leaders standing behind me and all the people on the front lines last night. Uh, we came through this without a fire. We came through it without any um, serious injuries. 
Uh, and again, that's uh, something to be said, and that's, I, I call those uh, uh, important steps. Uh, and again, if uh, those people that are in this community uh, that, that feel they may want to try to return to more violence and vandalism tonight, the offer stands. Uh, we're all available uh, to visit with you, from law enforcement to the mayors, uh, to the county, to myself. Because uh, let's have a dialogue and no more violence, uh, <clears throat> no more vandalism. It's not necessary. It's collateral damage that, that doesn't help achieve the objectives because we all believe in a more just, a more fair, and a more humane world. Let's work on that together. Thank you. Thank you, Governor, very much. Dave Todd recently announced he was going to retire from the department, one of the hardest decisions Dave has made. The real reason I hired Dave as police chief, or we hired him as commission, is because of his heart. And it was hard watching him last night as we watched what was happening in the city. It was personal. It was personal to the police force. Protect and serve is very, very much taken to heart by all our, all our men and women that serve for the police department. So for me, it was good, again, to see the heart that Dave has. And this was something he never wanted to see happen in our community, and it did. But I'm very proud of what he did as a plan, a game plan, and very proud of how he led us through the night. So Dave Todd. Good morning, everybody. The uh, mayor's right. That was heartbreaking last night. <clears throat> it was hard, hard to... Watch that happen. But what uh, lifts my heart is to see that great people of Fargo right back out there downtown and, and cleaning, cleaning up what happened last night and, and being Fargo strong. When uh, we received word that this, uh, this march was going to take place, um, we work with the organizers to try to facilitate that. We're certainly interested in them having the ability to, to do this, uh, have their freedom of speech, their, their freedom of assembly, and, and uh, try to affect some positive change, uh, not just for our community, but throughout the country. And so we reached out to them and tried to facilitate that and work on a route, uh, <clears throat> as well as staff it. Um, and. Uh, during that morning when we went out to, to begin to staff the, the route and, and make sure that we had traffic control for the route, um, unfortunately one thing happened was a Burlington Northern Santa Fe uh, rail arms came down at Main Avenue and Broadway, which was the route, uh, and uh, I, it went, they wouldn't go back up. I expressed concern about that. To, and. Uh, said we really needed Burlington Northern to get those arms raised. Um, they said there was nothing they could do. Uh, it would take at least an hour. So I staffed officers at those railroad tracks to walk people through there uh, to continue to facilitate the march. Uh, you could see some hostility in that march, but you could see good people too. Uh, there was a lot of good people. When that, when that march reached the police department, it was tense at times. But thanks to the interaction of Mayor Judd and Mayor Mahoney and some of my staff, I thought that that made the difference at the police department. And we had a, a really good interaction. Uh, it was a great opportunity. And so thank you to Mayor Judd and, and Mayor Mahoney for helping us with that. The march continued on streets that were not part of the route, but in watching what had happened in other cities, we tried to keep... Uh, uh, people safe. Uh, we didn't want to provoke people as long as damage wasn't happening and injuries or assaults weren't happening. We we're going to let them march and uh, just try to facilitate that in the safest way possible. That was a goal, to keep it safe. When the marches started coming back downtown, social media and some of our intelligence reports uh, indicated to us that there were plans to loot and burn downtown. And we started to see more aggression towards our officers. We asked for mutual aid from our surrounding law enforcement officer, our, our surrounding law enforcement agencies. Uh, two of them are here, great friends of mine, and, and they, they were amazing help to us with them and their personnel. We also asked for mutual aid 
uh, from the National Guard, and Governor Burgum and General Dorman helped facilitate that, and I thank them for that. While downtown, we tried to keep our officers calm and not have them react so that we didn't have provocation, and we tried to disengage from protesters uh, numerous times because whenever we had officers in a group somewhere, it seemed like they would come to us and try to instigate something. However, every time we disengaged, they rapidly followed us uh, aggressively uh, to the point where they then trapped two of my officers in their squad cars, surrounded them, and started damaging the squad cars, jumping on top of them and smashing out windows. This became a threatening situation for those officers and we had to get people in there to rescue them and get them out of that situation. At this time, rocks and bottles were being thrown at my officers. Because we had taken a softer stance, we just had helmets on. We didn't have shields at that point, but we could see that things were turning and that the intel that we were getting on the burning and looting was probably true. That was the point where I made the decision where we had to become a little bit more on the enforcement side and start to try to push this activity out of the downtown area to protect life and property. I would say when that happened and we used uh, chemical munitions, CS gas, to help push people away from, from those areas, there were some very good people still associated with that march that were out there trying to stop people from destroying things and, and stopping people from getting assaulted. I, I wanna make clear that there were some very good people associated with this, with this event that were still trying to stop the, what was happening. And I wanna personally thank them because I think they stopped some injury to our officers too. I would say there was, according to our sources on the ground, and we had undercovers on the ground amongst the crowd and intel coming in off of social media, there was probably 40 to 50 people that came here to Fargo not to really participate in the event, but to hijack it and to turn it into something else. It was very difficult to stop that from happening. We ended up arresting 18 people last night, 10 of them for, for inciting or participating in a riot, which is a class A misdemeanor. We had four officers that needed medical attention. Two of them have concussions from being hit with rocks and bricks. Uh, two of them had heat exhaustion and dehydration and had to be treated. We had three squad cars damaged significantly, but we're Fargo strong. We're gonna bounce back. We are gonna make our place a better place. I am still interested in interacting and having a dialogue with the good people of that march and affecting positive change. I wanna thank my officers who were in harm's way. Um, it was difficult to watch that. I wanna thank the responding, off, the responding agencies that helped us. Um, they helped us, we helped them in West Fargo. We had chiefs and sheriffs that responded from throughout the state to help us to bring this to, a, to an end, so thank you. And I wanna thank the governor and, and the mayors and General Dorman for giving us the resources we need. Thank you. During times of crisis, our neighbors help us out. West Fargo was there for us immediately. Jerry Boyer is interim chief, and if you'd like to make some comments, what happened to West Fargo? Uh, I don't have a whole lot to add to uh, what's been said already. Uh, I just want to take a moment to recognize all of the officers that were on the front line last night and all day yesterday, their professionalism, restraint, um, and compassion that they showed for everybody was phenomenal. Um, there were times during the, the march where things became very heated and those officers' professionalism kept things de-escalated. That is how we train in this metro area. We are one team, we are one community, um, and I'm just extremely proud of not only the West Fargo officers, but the Fargo Police Department, Cass County Sheriff's Department, Highway Patrol, and uh, just uh, Dave Todd and your leadership last night. The city doesn't exist without the county. The Cass County Sheriff's Department was excellent last night. Uh, 
Jesse Johnner, Sheriff. Good morning and thanks for being here. And of course, my name is Jesse Johnner. I'm the Sheriff in Cass County. So yesterday, May 29th, 2020, I contacted Chief Dave Todd and asked him if he needed assistance with any part of the protest that was planned for the city of Fargo in honor of George Floyd. Chief Todd told me that there was a large number of participants and according to the organizers, this was supposed to be a peaceful protest. As the time went along, the number of participators in the protest began to grow and as the protesters marched along their route, law enforcement began to see participants of the protest began to act out. A few of them chased some bystanders along the way and it was reported that a car was vandalized. We also started to get reports that some of the protests, protesters were carrying firearms. Based on this intel, I was concerned for the, for the public safety and so we activated an emergency call back to, of our employees which activates approximately 50 of our deputies. At this time, our employees were staged and were ready to deploy anywhere if needed, should we need to maintain peace. I was soon notified that our assistance was needed for traffic control and crowd management, so our office began to assist the Fargo Police Department. As we began to assist, we soon realized that this was not a peaceful protest, as protesters started to throw items such as bottles and rocks. The definition of a peaceful protest is one of expressing disapproval through a statement or action without the use of violence. This was not a peaceful protest. As the afternoon progressed, we started to get a large number of protesters in the Broadway area. Law enforcement did its best to be patient with the protesters and give them multiple opportunities to voice their opinions and their freedom of speech, but it was very apparent that many of these individuals were there to start a confrontation with law enforcement. Several attempts were made to get the crowd to disperse by verbal direction, but none were followed. As this was happening, we started to get additional reports of some fights, damages to squad cars, and other property. Law enforcement then started to become more proactive in trying to get these individuals to disperse. I think you guys know the rest. Rocks, bottles, and other items were thrown at officers. Officers started to receive injuries at this time. And I'm going to address this issue right now. Questions of why were law enforcement wearing riot gear? Because when people throw rocks and bottles, chairs, that stuff hurts. This morning I'm disgusted. I'm disgusted with some of our citizens who caused this kind of destruction in our community vandalizing businesses upon business, many of these businesses who give back to our community, that they would assault one another and our officers is absolutely disgusting to me. These protesters were not there to have their voices heard, they were there to conduct criminal activity and cause confrontations with law enforcement. So I want to assure the citizens of Fargo of Cass County that we will not let these individuals, these criminals continue to victimize our citizens or businesses the Cass County Sheriff's Office will stand shoulder to shoulder with the Fargo Police Department and law enforcement will succeed in getting back control. The doors of the Cass County Jail are open today and we are ready to bring those individuals who victimize our community to justice. In ending, I want to thank law enforcement for their courage and professionalism last evening and doing the best they could with the resources we had available to us. I saw looks of determination on officers' faces determination to protect this community. I want to thank a majority of our citizens, many of who have reached out to show their support and discuss for this type of civil unrest in our community. I want to thank Governor, Governor Burgum, General Dorman, and all our local leaders, Mayor Mahoney, Mayor, Th Mayor Judd, Mayor Dardis, Cass County Commissioner Chad Peterson, Cass County Commissioner Mary Scherling, Cass County Administrator Robert Wilson, who were with us and available yesterday and will be available today to make sure that we have the resources we need to protect our community. And finally, I want to thank all North Dakota and Minnesota law enforcement leaders and their officers who are here to assist our agencies. 
to include the Grand Forks Police Department and Grand Forks County Sheriff's Office who just had an officer killed in the line of duty. Officer Cody Holty, in the wake of grieving, they still sent 15 officers here to assist us. So with that, I just want to, I want to make sure that, that I'm clear that, uh, much like uh, Chief Todd said, a majority of the, the uh, demonstrators, protesters in that, that demonstration yesterday were peaceful. There was a small percentage in there that were there to, to conduct criminal activity. And that type of stuff in this community, we do, not, we do not want that. It was really disheartening for me this morning when I drove through downtown Broadway and saw our citizens, our community members, cleaning up their businesses down there and sweeping up the destruction from last night. And I wanna assure them that we are gonna do whatever we can to protect that from happening again, if, it, if, if that's the intent today. Um, but again, I, I greatly appreciate the, the outpouring of support that we've received from our citizens here in Cass County, um, even, even from the protesters that were peaceful and wanted to have a peaceful demonstration. Thanks for assisting us yesterday and, and supporting our officers. Thank you. Thank you very much. The West Fargo Mayor Bernie Dardis is always there when we need him. Called me immediately when this started to happen. How can we help you? How can West Fargo help you? Very much appreciate that he's on, on it right away and helps us in any way. Bernie Dardis. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you to Governor Burgum, fellow elected officials, and our law enforcement leaders that are here today. Yesterday's event showed us the power of our metro area. It showed us in the power that in times of toughness, we cr tackle the critical issues and we do it together. The events that occurred during the evening in downtown Fargo are not representative of this community or our taxpayers. If you need to look to something to reveal what our metro is about, look to the March for Floyd organizers and the thousands who showed up to demonstrate lawfully. Look to the volunteers who quickly organized themselves and are currently cleaning up the mess and destruction from last night. Like Sheriff Johnner, like Mayor Mahoney, this morning I drove downtown Fargo, and the first thing that I saw were three West Fargoans in downtown Fargo sweeping up glass and picking up garbage. That's the type of community we have, and I am sure there were many more from Moorhead. And finally, look to the men and women of the West Fargo Police Department, the Fargo Police Department, the Cass County Sheriff's Office, and the North Dakota Highway Patrol for their actions yesterday in protecting the, protecting the protesters' right to protest and then responding to a violent situation was nothing short of amazing. If you saw the abuse that our officers were taking, both physically and mentally, they stood proud, they stood together, they showed patience, they showed understanding, This Tuesday, the city of Grand Forks is going to lay arrest a police officer, Cody Holty. And that's going to be an amazing event. But there is no more important type of reverence that we could show in the memory of Cody Holty than what these men and what their team members did last night because they protected the freedom of our citizens just as Cody Holty died. So to you, I salute you. For your leadership, I salute you. Thank you for being in this with us together. Last night was a difficult time. Uh, I joked with Lieutenant Governor Sanford this morning when I was on the phone with him that uh, I think I visited with the governor 15 to 20 times yesterday. That's the type of engagement the governor had in helping us with our situation. And if I visited with the governor 15 times yesterday, I visited with Mayor Mahoney 200 times yesterday. The bond of these communities with Mayor Judd, Mayor Mahoney, and the city of West Fargo, we are one, and we'll get through this together.
Thank you so very much for being here. Be safe. And remember, the businesses that have been suffering downtown due to the COVID epidemic, and now they're going to deal with this, please do all that you can support, you can do to support them to get them back on their feet. Thank you kindly. Have a good day. Stay safe. <clears throat> Thank you, Bernie. Early in the morning, Jonathan Judd reached out to me and asked how he could help. Uh, we were downtown for the march, watched that, very happy about that. We had a crisis at the Fargo Police uh, Center and Jonathan and I both talked and we headed down that location. I was never more proud of Mayor Judd and what he did with me in the Fargo Police Station. Reached out, talked to people, broke it down. We back actually had dialogue. We thought it was a very nice protest. We were able to talk to people, we were able to engage them, uh, listen to their concerns. I think Jonathan got the brunt of the questions. I get less, but he's an attorney, so he knows how to talk. But it went well and we are very pleased. We said, okay, we averted a crisis. And both of us felt good about that. Last night when things deteriorated again, Mayor Judd reached out to me and he was working vigorously with a variety of community leaders he deals with trying to again diffuse this. Unfortunately, we couldn't diffuse it, but I want to thank Jonathan Judd for all the work he did with us yesterday. Thank you. <clears throat> thank you, uh, Mayor, for that. Um, I'm going to apologize in advance. Uh, I haven't had a lot of sleep in the last four days, so I might not be on top of my game as much as I would be. So a lot of this, I'm just gonna speak from the heart, but, <clears throat> um, <clears throat> excuse me. Is this water for anyone? Thank you. Uh, first and foremost, uh, the reason why we're here today, excuse me. is uh, <clears throat> because of George Floyd. Uh, and so before I begin my remarks, I, I do want to uh, extend a most uh, sincere condolences uh, to the uh, George Floyd uh, family. Um, obviously, this, this incident <clears throat> has uh, set off a lot of emotions uh, throughout our country and obviously in our region, but I do want to extend those condolences. Uh, next, I'd like to uh, extend a uh, big uh, thank you <clears throat> and gratitude uh, to uh, Chief uh, Shannon Monroe, uh, also uh, Sheriff Mark Emting, also uh, city uh, staff, City of Moorhead, uh, also to the city of uh, Detroit Lakes, uh, Clay and Becker and Ottertail uh, counties. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me, those individuals from those agencies came up to assist us locally, uh, there were uh, folks I know that, because uh, I had sta stood with them on the uh, First Avenue Bridge in Moorhead and also the Center Avenue Bridge up until 1, 120 approximately uh, this morning. And I had the uh, opportunity to uh, stand with those folks and uh, also just get to understand why they do their work and why it's important. I know that Chief Todd um, spoke on this as well as uh, Mayor Mahoney, but I think it also should be noted <clears throat> that those individuals that helped to quell what was going on in downtown, and I wanna specifically name them, uh, one would be uh, Connie Auden, who is the um, chief, I'm sorry, the chair of the Moorhead Human Rights Commission uh, and also uh, Hakun Dabar, uh, both are members also of the uh, African American Development um, Association at Moorhead. Uh, there was also, I know for sure, at least uh, two uh, Minnesota State, <clears throat> um, Minnesota Community State Technical College students also uh, that I had reached out to uh, that Honestly, I called them and I asked them to go downtown to help clear folks out. So this was a effort by not only law enforcement, but also members who are leaders in their own right in this community who went down there and helped 
to bring us all together and to make sure that, this, that the protest were, was to remain safe and peaceful. <clears throat> so I want to also thank them for their leadership in answering the call uh, to go down there and help keep things together. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, It's hard for me to find the words to really <clears throat> express my feelings because I got to be honest and I will speak very candidly. This has been an emotional roller coaster for not only myself, but for individuals that I, who I'm close to. And <clears throat> I think what came out of yesterday, when we came out of the untimely death of Mr. Floyd is that we honestly need to have a very serious conversation about race in this country. And specifically, we need to have a very candid conversation about institutional racism, and we also need to have a very candid conversation about how these concepts affect our community. It's time, folks. And I think it's <clears throat> important to note that when Mayor Mahoney called me to come over uh, to the Fargo Police Department headquarters, I just told Mayor Tim, we got to go in the crowd. This is the time where leaders step up. And it's very apparent that <clears throat> the people who were there who were protesting, uh, wanted to hear from people who they presumed care for them. So I had no idea what we were getting into when we came over there. But I can tell you from the front line, the Fargo Police Department acted in extreme professional capacity. And nothing should be said to disparage those individuals who stood there. I also want to say that the individuals who were protesting also acted in conformity. They acted with integrity. The mayor and I were not harmed. Law enforcement were not harmed, but there were people who obviously wanted their voices to be heard, and we heard you. We need, in this community, to listen with humility. Individuals who are in these roles standing here, we're going to make mistakes. It comes with the responsibility of leadership. We don't have all the answers individually, but collectively, we can make a difference in this community. And we will. I think we need to do better to nurture because the conversations that came out of those, out of that crowd were questions related to why do we not see more of us in these institutions? Why do we not see more police officers of color? Why do we not see more individuals in leadership within our community? It's very apparent that when individuals, because I grew up in this same manner, when you don't see yourself represented in the institutions that work for you, to care for you, to support you, you're going to have a feeling of distrust. It completely makes sense. I have lived that reality. The dilemma that I have is that now I am a part of the institution. And there may be folks that might not trust me because they think that I serve to protect the institution that they feel that they don't trust. So understand my dilemma here. But I can tell you, I can assure you, 
that we all have learned something from this incident. And the people who reside here, you know that you can come and speak to each and every one of these individuals because we're going to be committed to making a difference and making sure that your voice is a part of the process. That is why I remain in this region. That is a part of my story. I went to school, I graduated with two other folks here from Fargo North High School. Sorry, Chief, you're a little bit older than me. <laughs> but he is a Fargo North grad too. But this is a community that can nurture leadership of all diverse backgrounds. This is a community that probably needs to learn how to communicate when it comes to these things, but we also need to be able to speak candidly and, with hum and listen with humility as we try to move things forward. But folks, there's a way to do it. There's a way to do it. For those of you who are down with the cause, you need to understand that there's a, there's a way that we can communicate so that we can work together constructively and, and strategically to make sure that we have the voices in our community represented in these institutions within our region. But you have to be actively involved in the process, be a part of the conversation and understand that no one up here is operating with ill intent. You have to have an element of trust and mutual assurance and respect, and we can do that here in this region. That is why we haven't had the concerns that other communities have had. So that the question is, <clears throat> where do we go from here? What have we learned? Well, I think the biggest takeaway that I've learned is that when you sit and talk to people and you actually listen to what they have to say, and when you saw Chief Todd and his staff shaking hands, giving, probably breaking social distancing protocol, hugs, <laughs> smiling and talking from many diverse backgrounds and socioeconomic backgrounds. That is the promise and the vision that we have here in this community that we can come together. Law enforcement, community leaders of, of diversity working together to try to protect people. We need more of that. So <clears throat> I just want to say thank you to everybody. <sighs> thank you to the agencies. Thank you to uh, my brothers and sisters throughout the region who are determined to be a part of the solution and not a part of the problem. And I look forward to working with each and every one of you, regardless if you are in Moorhead, Clay County, or across the river here, please, Let's learn from this incident and move forward together as a community. Moorhead proud. Have a good day. At one time, I think he was thinking of being a preacher. Very well done, Mayor Judd. And uh, we really truly do listen, and we try to listen, and we've been doing that for quite some time. <clears throat> Pass County uh, Chair J Chad Peterson. When you speak last after so many amazing individuals, there's not much left to say. I'll start with a couple points. First, thank you to those of you that showed up to march yesterday. All too often, we forget to express ourselves publicly. We, we post online, we post anonymously, we talk amongst our friends and family. But showing up and expressing yourself publicly takes a bit of bravery. The way to do it is peacefully. The people who are here to rabble rouse, destroy, steal, harm. That's not who we are, it's never who we're going to be. So thank you for being brave, for showing up and expressing yourselves. 
Item two, thank you to our law enforcement community and our guard. We often forget the people we ask to protect us have moms and dads, husbands and wives, little kids at home that watch it on TV. It's hard for them to understand that they're going to be safe, or we hope they are, that the people who wish them ill actually do, in some cases, want to harm them, yet they still show up to protect us and protect our property. They still show up to do the things I would never do. I'm not as brave as many of you. And we know there's an officer in Grand Forks that made the ultimate sacrifice, and that was for us. There's loss here, more than property. There's psychological damage. But we'll get through it, as we always have. Lastly, as I've been said prior, the people that showed up to cause harm, break, steal, and do the things that we're all sort of afraid of sometimes aren't who we are and will never be who we are. So thank you again to those of you that protested peacefully. Thank you again to those of you in law enforcement and in the Guard. Thank you to my fellow leaders because we're the ones who get to sit in the talk, Tactical Operations Center, Incident Command Center, and watch helplessly as our friends go out and protect us. Thank you. And Chad, I want to thank you and your team for stepping up right away and came in and did the things you needed to do for us. As always, the county works very well with all our cities, so we're very pleased with that. At this point, we'd open it up for questions. Uh, if anybody would have any questions, Ty has a micro microphone there. And when you ask the question, please tell me who you want to answer it. This question is for Chief Todd. Um, Chief, your, your department's done a lot of work with community policing, reaching out to young people. Uh, last night's uh, rioting you know, appeared, to be, uh, appeared to involve a lot of youth, uh, teenagers, kids, um, and some adults. When you see that, d does it seem like there's a lot of work to be done in engaging the youth? The, What's your reaction to that? Uh, that's, a, that's a great question. I don't know if I completely know the answer to that. Um, we, we do a lot of engagement, and we do have a lot of youth programming um, specifically directed towards our, our underprivileged kids, our minority youth, uh, kids at risk, um, and, and we try to target that. Um, I don't know that I saw any of those kids out there. Uh, maybe there were a couple. I'm not sure. Uh, I, what I saw, though, and what the my my people that were on the ground in undercover assignments saw, was there were people there instigating it, and that was their job. They were traveling. Uh, their conversations were they were traveling from city to city to do specifically this to cause mayhem and destruction. And sometimes when you get a core group of people like that, they can pull in other people, especially other people that are easily um, susceptible to being led to do things, uh, like young people. And so maybe that's part of what you saw. Um, do we have more to do? Always, always have more to do. I just want to make one comment. I just want to make a comment about the youth. He's my son's 17, and he'd never seen a demonstration or a protest, so he went downtown to see what was going on. He saw many of his friends in the protest. To him, it was a fun event before it got bad. To him, it was, we're protesting, we're standing up for something. This is really interesting, Dad. I didn't know that went on. So I, I well, that's good. When uh, tear gas came out and those things came out, he realized something had gone wrong with this demonstration. And he said, Dad, I don't know what happened, but it changed from a demonstration in which I could be happy to be proud of to a demonstration where it seemed out of control. So I think some kids were as Chief Todd's who came in for seeing what was going on. And when it came out that there were other people that were hardened protesters that had a purpose, it was not what started out in the morning. You had another question for him. 
Uh, Mayor Mahoney, uh, Chief Todd, you both mentioned uh, outside influencers. Could you elaborate on that? Uh, what evidence you all have of that um, and, and why you think that? We know that because we had undercover people in amongst them, trying, listening to them, following them around, uh, getting close to their conversations. They were, were, were not from this area. They were traveling from city to city. They talked about some of the cities they had already been to, some of the cities that they might go to, to do this exact same thing. They were not interested in our march or for affecting positive change, for recognizing what happened in Minneapolis and, and expressing sorrow for that family. They were here to create mayhem and destruction. That was their purpose, They're to hijack this event and turn it into something else. I'm, I'm sorry, the of people arrested. Oh, um, a number of people were from this area that were arrested, and there's, I think, a, a couple that were from outside the area, and some no permanent address. I'm sure if uh, Sheriff Johnner has some of that information. I do not know where all of them are from. Of course, we can get you that information, but a couple of them or at least one of them that I have has lists a California address. And I don't, you know, verified it at this point. If they still live there, they could have very well moved here and have been living here for a while and just haven't changed that address. Um, but that would be something that we could potentially get the information to you on. Can I ask you if you know if any of the people in custody were part of those organizers on the negative side of things? And if not, uh, is it possible more arrests will be made following investigation? You know, the, the, the investigation will continue as to who the, what the involvement of those people were. I, I don't have the person-to-person -person knowledge for what that arrest was made for or uh, what the circumstance was. The reports are being done right now. We do have extensive video footage from our traffic cams from our downtown cameras that have captured the images of a lot of people and actions that they were involved in. And we will be going through that video footage with our detectives and I would expect that charges will be forthcoming. Looking forward to tonight, do you guys have any worries that anything will happen again? If so, is there any plans, any curfews that are intact at this point? We're hoping the citizens of our community turn out. Uh, we're having people take back the downtown right now. Uh, we've been told by a variety of people we're going to have some peaceful people in the community, not demonstrating, but trying to just keep things uh, at an even keel. Uh, we're, uh, our hope is that our protesting is done now but we'll be ready if, it's, if it eats up again. And we would just say, your voice, just like Mayor Judd has said, your voices have been heard. You can come and talk to any one of us. There's leaders in the crowd you could talk to. Every one of us has a door open. So we would say, if you have something to say, just come and talk to us, we'd be happy to do that. But it, we don't need to demonstrate today. I guess this would be for Bergham probably, but I, can I ask about um, the National Guard's role moving forward tonight? The state of North Dakota received a request uh, from three local political subdivisions at Cass County, City of West Fargo, and the City of Fargo. Uh, we were pleased to be able to be in a position to respond to that and respond quickly. Uh, the, we're, we're fortunate in North Dakota, we've got a fantastic National Guard, and as the people in our state know, uh, that we've had uh, over 300 National Guardsmen that have been called out over the last two months, uh, assisting in a big way, uh, supporting uh, the healthcare efforts related to the pandemic. Uh, there was some training going on this weekend, guardsmen that do have regular training. Some of that training was happening here in Fargo. Uh, those were some of the individuals that were able to uh, be deployed uh, last night around 9 p.m. And they were able to be in support of the great law enforcement efforts of 
Fargo, West Fargo, Cass County, and the surrounding areas. And, and again, I want to thank uh, General Dorman. Uh, I want to thank uh, Brandon Solberg, who leads the North Dakota Highway Patrol, and, and again, the, the great law enforcement leaders standing behind me. One thing that we have in the state is uh, people have a lot of relationships and also prior experience working together in times of disaster and crisis, and the level of collaboration and coordination uh, is very high. I think that's, we should not take that for granted. We're fortunate that we've got leaders that know how to uh, communicate, part, communicate and work together. One of the reasons why, even though we had a planned riot last night, uh, when you take a look at the outcomes here where there was uh, property damage but no uh, serious injuries, uh, no fires. I want to also thank the Fargo Fire Department, which uh, was double shifted last night. The National Guard was working in support of them if they'd been called out to help protect firefighters. But uh, I, I'd say that the uh, all things considered, the reason why we've had as positive of outcome, including the great uh, cleanup work this morning, is because of the, the leadership from uh, everybody standing behind me today. So again, we're, we're fortunate to have collaboration that extends across political subdivisions, across the state border, uh, across you know two counties, multiple communities, multiple counties coming together here. I mean, we just happens all the time in North Dakota that we've got people that come together like neighbors, but we we can't uh, take that for granted. And of course, our guardsmen, uh, <clears throat> like was said earlier, guardsmen they have uh, civilian lives, civilian jobs. They've got families, uh, and but they're always ready, always there, and they're ready to help in times of emergency, whether it's a flood, whether it's a pandemic. Uh, or whether it's a planned riot, and uh, they were there right there last night, uh, and they'll work in coordination with local law enforcement uh, going forward as needed, uh, as long as uh, there's a, uh, this uh, emergency is in effect. So again, uh, thanks to all the leaders uh, and the great work that all of you are doing. This question is for Mayor Mahoney and Chief Todd. Do you all expect another curfew tonight? Uh, the curfew was lifted this morning and I anticipated it being off. We, it won't come on unless we have issues downtown. I would anticipate today what we're gonna have is a lot of people coming downtown looking, seeing what's happening and what happened in the community. And I would just say, let's mingle together and uh, keep it peaceful. Chief Todd, I don't think we need a curfew right now. No, so we wouldn't do that. Okay, did you all have any reports of looting or was there any evidence of actual looting there were some people that broke in jail beers and some people broke into the bank gate city bank mm -hmm. um so we did have some attempts to get in some of our banking institutions and we had some pro property destruction that you'd see on the exchange building most of it was windows that people broke but they did break into jail beers to take a lot of furniture out so that was probably the worst one hit okay was there anything stolen aside from the furniture uh, that I don't know. Uh, when I talked to Randy Thorson, he said they had no till in there with any money. So anticipated what they would get was some beers, I guess. <laughs> so. Was any money taken from the bank? Uh, the bank, they didn't get any money out, no. Okay. They couldn't get to the spot they wanted to get, so. And uh, you mentioned, Chief Todd mentioned protester or uh, officer injuries, which are unfortunate. Uh, were there any protester injuries that you all know of? Uh, people who showed up at hospitals or had to be taken by ambulance from the scene? There were a couple of injuries that I'll need to follow up on. Uh, we weren't involved in those injuries. Uh, somebody got a, a gash to their arm, some type of cut to their arm, which we were able to uh, get uh, them to medical attention. We received a report of a gunshot to a leg. I'm not sure where that happened or how it happened. Uh, I'll have to dive into that and even verify if that was true, but we were not involved in that either. What did the other arrests involve? Uh, I don't have that information with me right now. Thank you very much. I'm gonna send these guys back to work, so we have to do that, and uh, we very much appreciate everybody's help with this this morning. Fargo Strong, let's go on. <laughs>